history has witnessed several martins who have ruled by oppressing people and endeavoured to annihilate their enemies to gain absolute power. Such tyrants have been referred to as dictators. The term dictator came to existence when there was a title given in Roman Republic to a magistrate who was appointed by the Senate to rule when there was a state of emergency in the Republic. Although earlier when the term came to existence, there was no negative meaning to it because once the duration of magistrate's rule as a dictator was over, he had to resume his job as a magistrate again and give his account of happenings at the time of his rule. The term started getting negative impacts when Cornelius Sulla, a skilled Roman general who held the highest gallantry in the Roman court, the grass crown, took over as a dictator. Julius Caesar was the next to follow Cornelius Sulla's footsteps. He defied all the rules and crossed all the boundaries of his powers, but was soon assassinated. There have been several dictators in the past, and some that continue to dictate in the present too, who have taken to cruelties that are unforgivable and horrific. There is no order as to who was or is the worst. They just don't seem to have an end to thirst for power, and they will go to all extremes just to have their work done. There are about many countries, states and nations across the globe that are still under dictatorship or follow a dictatorship government. The day is still waited when there would be a world free of dictatorship rulers and a government that is more comprehensive and democratic. What is dictatorship? A form of government where a single person or an enclosed group retains complete power without proper laws to stop them can be termed as dictatorship. We already discussed that the original term was a name given to a position, but since people took advantage of it, the world dictator has had a bad reputation ever since. Moreover, the subsequent dictators, those came to power, or are still in power, carry the same reputation of being unscrupulous and behave more than a tyrant rather than a dictator. Fraud and force is what they use to get a hold on the position and continue to uphold these characteristics throughout their rule. Terror, suppression and depriving people of their basic freedom is what they use to frighten them and sustain their position politically. After the decline of monarchy form of government in the 19th and 20th centuries, dictatorship and democratic form of governments came into effect. There were different types of dictatorships that took form, such as in Latin America after the nations were free from the clutches of Spanish rule, there were several self-proclaimed leaders who had small armies first gained control over a certain region and then attacked a weak national government. Juan Manuel de Rosas in Argentina and Antonio López de Santa Ana in Mexico are a couple of examples. The dictators of a more modern 20th century did not aim provinces, rather the national government got themselves an important position in the military. They normally befriended a specific upper class and either tried to introduce extensive progressive social transformations or preserve the benefits of the rich and important leaders. After the World War II, there were many states of Asia and Africa that were quickly taken by dictators who built their reign on the scattered and weak foundations of the Western colonial powers who were unsuccessful without a powerful middle class and against the local customs of tyrannical rule. Some countries saw their elected prime ministers and presidents take hold of power by subduing the opposition and form one-party rule whereas in some places they took over with the help of army and military dictatorship were established throughout. These types of dictatorships were completely different from those that were established in more advanced countries in the 20th century. Joseph Stalin controlled Soviet Union while Adolf Hitler took control of Nazi Germany and practiced a more modern authoritarian dictatorship. The main features of both the dictators were that the state was identified with one party and a single leader of that party, the use of an official philosophy to legitimize and uphold the command, the use of fear and propaganda to subdue opposition and smooth the resistance, and the use of science and technology to control the frugality and discreet comportment.
Communist dictatorships rose in China, Eastern and Central Europe, and some other countries at the time of World War II. However, most of them, including that of Soviet Union, had fallen by the end of the 20th century. At the time of foreign or domestic crisis, even the strongest of governments have deliberated emergency powers of the chief executive, and in many well-known situations, this power has been misused by the elected leaders who have turned the tables and removed democratic rule to establish dictatorship. Declaration of an emergency rule was what led to the dictatorship rule of Kemal Atatürk in Turkey, Hitler in Germany, Antonio de Oliveira Salazar in Portugal, Josef Pilsudski in Poland and Benito Mussolini in Italy. Democratic countries like United States and Great Britain have endured long times of emergency and critical situations in the nations where the powers of the executive were ended when the wartime emergency was over. What makes a dictator? There are many traits that most dictators share. They normally rule governments with one leader that is appointed by them and no prevailing body to limit his power. Usually, dictators practice tyrannical systems and preserve their power by controlling the media. Such dictators also have a powerful secret police and spies who keep a constant check on the people of the state and confine or completely strip them of their individual freedom. Most dictators adopt a sort of cult where the public are asked to worship them as their hero or god. They publicly claim that they are impeccable or have been sent by God to rule over them. Kim Il Sung, the father of present dictator Kim Jong Il of North Korea, was the only subject that the people of the country could utilize to create any piece of artwork. Children at school were trained to thank Kim Il Sung because he was the source of their blessings. He was self-obsessed just like Saddam Hussein and one can find a number of posters, statues, paintings, etc. that carried his image. Although in many situations a state of emergency or an illegal seizure has resulted in a dictatorship but there have also been situations when they have come to power legally. For instance, Hitler was made the head of the government in 1933 by President Paul von Hindenburg and after his death, Hitler pronounced himself Führer. Besides being leaders in politics, most dictators are holders of highly military ranks and had or have been excellent military commanders before they took complete control of the nation. Panama's Manuel Noriega was a soldier. Throughout his life, and even though he was not a president lawfully, he was pronounced the chief executive. He directed the military of the country and often publicly appeared in military uniform. Manuel Noriega's rule as a dictator can be termed as a military dictatorship, which has a civil government that exercised less power, unlike the theocracies, where the country is completely ruled by the military. Military dictators usually make their way to dictatorship through a coup d'état, but some of them take over the rule itself. For instance, when the president of Iraq, Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr, was sick, Saddam Hussein, the general of Iraqi army and vice president then, had gained much power. He was soon the president of Iraq. A military dictatorship could also be a group of people who control a nation, such as Latin America that was controlled by a junta, or a committee of military leaders who rule the nation by subjugation and ruthless behavior. Burma was under such a rule for around 50 years. Dictators of the World There is no first or last in the list of dictators that have ruled or are ruling the nations. The question is how effective their rule was and how much they benefited the society or the nation that they governed. Whatever they aim was they have failed to find a place in the hearts of the people as good men. A. Adolf Hitler Born in 1889 in Austria, he was the dictator of Germany from 1934 to 1945. He caused millions of deaths and his policies triggered the World War II. He was responsible for thousands of Jewish deaths through the Holocaust. 
His career started in the August of 1914 when he was selected to serve in the German army while he was still a citizen of Austria. He displayed good military skills and was adorned with black wound badge and Iron Cross First Class. When Germany surrendered in the war of 1918, Hitler and many other nationalists were estranged and thought they were betrayed by the Marxists and other civilian leaders. He thought that the Treaty of Versailles was mortifying, especially the clause which stated that Germany admits the responsibility that they elicited the war and the demilitarization of Rhineland. Hitler continued to work as an intelligence officer for the military in Munich after the World War I was over, while keeping an eye on the undertakings of the DAP, German Workers' Party, Hitler embraced many anti-Marxist, anti-Semitic and nationalist thoughts of the founder of DAP, Anton Drexler. Hitler joined the DAP in 1919 after he received an invitation from Drexler. In order to make it sound more interesting, DAP changed its name and was now called the NSDAP, National Sozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterparty. The red banner, comprising of a swastika within a white circle, was designed by Hitler. He soon gained a bad name for voicing spiteful speeches against the Treaty of Versailles and his opponent politicians, Jews and Marxists. 1921, Hitler was the leader and party chairman of NSDAP. His famous beer hall dialogues enticed regular people, such as the head of Nazi parliamentary organization, Caption Ernst Rom and Stumbeitlung SA, that provided security to the meetings and at times attacked the political adversaries. Hitler, along with SA, attacked a meeting of 3,000 people on November 8, 1923, in the Beer Hall of Munich, declaring that the revolution had started and there was a new government that should be formed. This coup, known as Beer Hall Putsch, led to 20 deaths and was a failure. He was under arrest for a treason and had to serve one year in prison, where he dictated the Mein Kampf to his deputy Rudolf Hess. This was the first volume of his book and comprised of plans to transform German society which would be based on one race. Hitler's Rise When Germany was hit by the Great Depression, Hitler took this as an opportunity because the people were unsure of the parliamentary republic and were willing to listen to the extremists. He stood against Paul von Hindenburg for the position of the president and gained about 35% of the votes coming second in the elections. He was now a powerful force in the politics of Germany. To bring about a political balance in the nation, Hindenburg unwillingly made Hitler the chancellor. He formed a de facto legal dictatorship and after there was fire at the Reichstag, he announced the Reichstag Fire Decree that deprived basic rights and detention without a lawful trial was permitted. He also created a passage of the Enabling Act which let the cabinet have full control of the legislative powers for the next four years, which also included constitutional deviances. Once he has complete control over the executive and the legislative sections of the government, Hitler, along with his supporters, went ahead with the suppression of what remained of the political opposition. The other parties were dispersed and July 14, 1933, Hitler's Nazi party became the only lawful political party in Germany. All those from the military who did not support Hitler were punished. SA demanded more military and political power that initiated the Night of the Long Knives, lasting from June 30, 1934 to July 2, 1934. Many political enemies of Hitler, SA leaders and Ernst Röhm, were all shot dead. A day before Hindenburg died in August 1934, a law was enacted that obliterated the presidential office and amalgamated the powers with the chancellor. Hitler was now head of government and state and was legally named Chancellor and leader of Germany. He was now the supreme commander of the German forces. He immediately withdrew from the League of Nations and publicized that Germany would expand its armed forces. He added many measures to reform the society by promoting anti-smoking campaigns throughout the nation. These campaigns were actually taken from what Hitler followed in his diet and routine.
He avoided meat and alcohol. The Germans were invigorated to keep their bodies free of any impure and alcoholic things. Nazis strongly believed in racial hygiene and the new laws stated that Jewish Germans and non-Jewish could not marry. They were stripped of their citizenship. One of his policies also targeted children and adults with mental and physical disabilities. A euthanasia program was authorized by him for the adults with disabilities. The Holocaust, a murderous act and one of the largest genocide in contemporary history, was also authorized by Hitler. The Nazis thought of themselves as racially superior and thought that the Jews were a danger to their community. There were more than 11 million people killed in these holocausts, of which 6 million were Jews. Two-thirds of the Jews' population was wiped out. Besides, there were disabled people, homosexuals, elderly, Jehovah's Witnesses, gypsies and whoever they considered as a disadvantage to the society. World War II and Death of Hitler Many European leaders along with Hitler signed the Munich Agreement that reserved a part of Versailles Treaty and surrendered districts of Sudetenland to Germany. This only accelerated his hunger for more power and on September 1, 1938, he attacked Poland. Britain and France answered by declaring war on Germany. Despite Hitler's planning and plotting, Germany suffered and the condition of the army deterred. By 1945, there were many enemies preparing to attack Germany. Hitler married his girlfriend on April 29, 1945, in the Berlin bunker. Afraid that they would fall into the hands of the enemies, Hitler and his girlfriend committed suicide the next day on April 30, 1945. Hitler's insane political program left a penurious and shattered Central and Eastern European, including Germany. B. Josef Stalin Josef Stalin was born in Gori, Georgia, a small peasant village in Russia, on December 18, 1879. He was born by the name Josef Vissarionovich Jugashvili, to a cobbler father and washerwoman mother. He was weak and suffered a series of accidents and health problems that left him with a scarred face and deformed arm. He was bullied as a child, which provoked him to earn respect. He was later introduced to an organization, Mizam Daisy, who looked forward to being the Georgians and be liberated from Russia, which he joined in 1898. He worked as a tutor and then in the Tiflis Observatory as a clerk, while he continued to be associated with the revolutionary movement. He later joined the Social Democratic Labour Party in 1901, but was arrested for calling upon a labour strike. He was exiled to Siberia, and it is then that he kept his name Stalin, which in Russian means steel. Although he was not an impressive speaker, but was excellent in organising strikes, arranging meetings, publishing leaflets and carrying out routine operations of the revolution. Stalin escaped from Siberia and continued his work in hiding and raised money for the group by extortion, robbery and kidnappings. He gained notoriety for being connected to the Tiflis bank robbery in 1907, which caused many deaths and about 250,000 rubles stolen. The Russian Revolution started in the February of 1917 and after much violence, as many battled for power and position, Joseph Stalin was declared the General Secretary of the Communist Party in 1922. Stalin now controlled the appointment of the party members and the new appointments made by him were in a way that he controlled the whole Communist Party. Lenin was too sick to get back control and in 1924 Stalin exiled and denounced many people to safeguard his position as the new leader and even Leon Trotsky, who was presumed to succeed Lenin, was sent abroad. The peasants who now owned their lands because of the Bolshevik Argarian were forcefully asked to surrender them to the government. Stalin made the life of the peasants worse, as they were now facing the same situation as they were when they were under the monarch. They were serfs again. Stalin thought that by collecting all the land together, there would be more production of food. 
Instead, there were millions of people killed because of forced labor and the famine that followed. He also hastened industrialization, which was successful earlier, but soon had a negative impact on the environment and there were millions of lives lost in the procedure. Those who opposed met dangerous consequences and were executed or exiled to the labor camps in Gulag. Stalin was smart enough to sign a non-aggression pact with Hitler, but a fool to trust Hitler's veracity. His military officers warned him about the dangers of Germany's plan to mobilize their army, but he took a deaf ear. When the Nazis struck Soviet Union in June 1941, their army suffered much loss. Stalin lay hidden in his office for many days, and by the time he could revive, the Germans had Paris and Ukraine, while Leningrad was surrounded. It was only in 1943 that Soviet Union was able to retire the Germans and also began freeing many countries in the Eastern Europe. Stalin always suspected that he would be attacked by the Western nations and created a huge area known as Buffer Zone, which separated Soviet Union from the Western Europe. Death of Stalin From 1950, Stalin suffered from poor health and on March the 5th, 1953, he was no more. He left behind a legacy of death and trail of blood in his attempt to turn a backward Russia into an important superpower of the world. C. Benito Mussolini Born to Alessandro and Rosa on July 29, 1883, in Forli, Italy, Benito Amilcare Andrea Mussolini was a bright yet defiant Benito displayed desire for socialist politics and was always rebellious against authority. Although he was intelligent, he was expelled from many schools because he always broke school laws and was famous for bullying. He completed his studies and managed to get a teaching certificate and also taught in a school for some time. Rise to Power as Socialist in order to promote socialism, he moved to Switzerland in 1902 and quickly became popular for his oratorical talents. He used to engage in political demonstrations which offended the Swiss authorities and was therefore banished from the country. He returned as an editor of a newspaper in 1904 and had a better way to express his socialist views. Though he was against the idea of Italy initially, he saw his chance to gain more power. His socialist cohorts were snubbed by his view and he was ousted from the organization. He partook in the war and fought gaining to the position of corporal. After the war, Mussolini continued his political undertakings and formed a fascist party in 1919. He also structured paramilitary unit called Black Shirts who terrified political adversaries. When Italy faced political discord in 1922, Mussolini stated that he could reinstate order and was given the rights. By 1925, he disbanded all democratic organizations and declared himself il duce, or the leader, the dictator. Mussolini did a lot of work for the public and was able to reduce unemployment, which made him a favorite among the people. Military Achievements Mussolini invaded Ethiopia and captured Addis Ababa without much struggle from Ethiopia. He expanded the realms of Italy by incorporating Ethiopia to it. He sent the fascists to Spain to participate in the Spanish Civil War with high hopes of broadening his influence. His successful military ventures managed to grab Hitler's attention and by 1939 the two countries signed the Pact of Steel. He followed the footsteps of Hitler and imposed discrimination dogmas against the Jews. He then invaded Greece in 1940. Italy's resources were exhausted and the Italians thought that the pact with Germany would give them time to recover. Nonetheless, Hitler invaded Poland, professed war over France and Britain and Italy was automatically dragged into war which exposed its now weak military. The extended territories were lost and Mussolini was saved from a military coup in 1941 by the German army. Death and Defeat Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill together planned and the Allied forces marched up the Italian peninsula. 
With so much pressure, Mussolini was made to resign forcibly and arrested, but was rescued by the German commandos. Unwilling to accept defeat, he took his government to northern Italy. The Allied forces freed Rome on June 4, 1944, and moved ahead to take over Italy. Benito Mussolini and Clarita Petacci, his mistress, tried to flee Switzerland, but were caught by the Italian underground and were executed in Mezzecra on the April 28, 1945, and their bodies were hung in the Milan Plaza. The citizens of Italy welcomed Mussolini's death, for they were tired of his tyranny and his obsession to become more powerful and had bought them nothing but war and melancholy. D. Saddam Hussein One of the most murderous tyrants of the 20th century, Saddam Hussein, was born on April 28, 1937, to a shepherd family in Tikrit, Iraq. He suffered abuse from his stepfather and ran away to live with Talfa, who was an Arab nationalist and had much influence on Saddam. He joined the Baths party at the age of 20. His party aimed at the unification of Arab states. His group tried to assassinate the Iraqi president, Abdul Karim Qasim, who was resistant to join hands with his organization. Qasim survived the gunshots and many from the group of assassins were caught, however, Saddam escaped with a bullet in his leg to Syria. Saddam's Rise to Power Saddam returned to Iraq in 1963, when Qasim's government crumbled when he was sent to prison because of a fight that happened in a Ba'ath party. He continued his political undertakings from the prison and became the deputy secretary of the regional command in 1966. He escaped prison and continued his works, and in a bloodless upheaval, a Ba'ath leader, Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr, became the president of Iraq, and Saddam was given the place of his deputy. Although completely ruthless, Saddam demonstrated good skills as a politician and helped in modernizing industry, social services, farming subsidies and education. Iraq was now much above the Arab countries. He had a powerful security system which constantly used torture, assassination and rape to attain their goals. This security comprised of People's Army and the Ba'athist paramilitary. Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr was forced to resign by Saddam when he made an unsuccessful attempt to unite Syria and Iraq. If the unification would have happened, Saddam would have been left powerless. Saddam Hussein became the new president of Iraq on July 16, 1979, after Ahmed Hassan al-Bakr's forced resignation. After a week, Saddam called a meeting of the Ba'ath party and announced names of 68 people who were arrested, tried, and 22 of them were given death sentence. Saddam got rid of all his enemies by August 1979. There was only a limited group of Sunni population that supported Saddam, and he was always afraid of the Shias, who were also a majority in the neighboring country of Iran, could lead to an upsurge similar to the one that was led by Ayatollah Khomeini in Iran. Saddam attacked Khuzestan, Iran, on September 22, 1980, which violated the international laws, but Saddam seemed to be least affected by this. This caused thousands of deaths over the years and saying that it was a historical part of Iraq, he attacked Kuwait on August 2, 1990. Economic sanctions were imposed on Iraq by the UN Security Council, asking the Iraqi forces to withdraw from Kuwait. When his troops ignored the warnings and crossed the deadline of January 15, 1991 by choosing to stay in Kuwait, the UN coalition force confronted the army of Iraq and drove them out. There were many rebellions in Iraq that happened after the Gulf Wars, which were crushed by Saddam. Fall and Death of Saddam Hussein Iraq was suspected of planning attacks on March 20, 2003, but the plans were devastated by the US-led coalition forces that tumbled the government and military. Although Saddam flee, then he was caught on December 13, 2003, hiding in an underground bunker near Tikrit. He was handed over to the Iraqi government, where he was tried and found guilty. He was sentenced to death on November 5, 
2006, and at Camp Justice was hanged to death on December 30, 2006. E. Mao Tse Tung China, once a feudal backwater, was turned into a powerful country by Mao Tse Tung. Although his intentions were towards the well-being of his country, he was responsible for millions of deaths of his countrymen. More than what Hitler or Stalin were responsible for. Mao was born to a farmer's home on December 26, 1893, in China. His father was a strict but a wealthy grain dealer and mother was a homemaker. He went to a small village school and also started working in his ancestral fields when he was 13. He was married at the age of 14, against his wishes, so left home when he was 17 and enrolled himself in a secondary school in Changsha, which was the capital of Hunan province. He joined the revolutionary group of Kuomintang, led by Sun Yat-sen, and participated in the Xinhua Revolution. They toppled the monarchy in 1912 and founded the Republic of China with Sun Yat-sen as their first president. Mao graduated from Hunan First Normal School in the year 1918 and became a certified teacher. He moved to Beijing and found himself the job of a library assistant in the Beijing University. Later, he became a member of the Chinese Communist Party in 1921. Although Mao had earlier supported both Communist Party and Kuomintang, he adopted the Leninist ideas and followed the belief that communism could be established if you appeal to the farmers. His ideas were loved by many and soon grew to become the executive of the party in the Shanghai branch. After Sun Yat-sen died in March 1925, Kuomintang's new ruler was Chiang Kai-shek, whose ways were traditional and conservative. Chiang broke the alliance and started imprisoning and killing Spree. Mao led the peasants against Kuomintang but faced defeat and was left of the army fled to Jiangxi province. Mao helped in establishing the Soviet Republic of China, where he formed a small yet powerful army of guerrilla fighters. By 1934, the Jiangxi province communists had ten regions under their control. Jiang was tensed about Mao's rising power and in the October of 1934, he collected around a million government forces and had the communists fenced. Mao chose to retreat and for 100,000 communists and their families moved to the north and west, passing the swamp lands and mountains. This was known as the Long March and it is believed that only 30,000 people survived this trek. Several youngsters went to Yan'an when they came to know that the communists had escaped Kuomintang and were now living there. Mao added a number of volunteers to the party while he became the top communist leader. Mao's Rise to Power Chinese forces lost control over China when the Japanese Imperial Army invaded in July 1937. Chiang fled to Nanking, who then asked Mao's help to chase the Japanese out. Mao's army, with the help of Allied forces, fought the Japanese and defeated them in 1945. A civil war broke out in the country when the United States tried to establish a coalition government. Mao announced the People's Republic of China on October 1, 1949, in the Tiananmen Square, Beijing, and Chiang, together with his followers, formed the Republic of China in Taiwan. In the subsequent years, Mao had land reforms done, promoted women's status, introduced many literacy programs and promoted health care, which increased life expectancy. His reforms were not quite successful in the cities and he identified this discontent and propelled the Hundred Flowers campaign in 1956 so the people could come up with their concerns. Instead, people rebuked. Mao was so shaken by this rejection, he callously crumpled any rebellions. There were thousands who were thrown in jail and were called rightists. Mao launched greatly poured in 1958 so he could develop the industrial and agricultural production. 
There were huge communities formed with about 75,000 people working in the fields. Every family was given plot of land and some profit. The results were good initially, but three years of continuous floods ruined China. The agricultural and the industrial production were both not up to the mark and in a year's time famine took over China. An estimated 40 million people died in this man-made famine between 1959 and 1961. Mao could lead a revolution in not a country. The actual affected numbers of this calamitous period was hidden from the world and the nation. The project failed miserably and in 1926 Mao was pushed aside while his rivals took the reign of China in their hands. Mao's return to power and death Mao made a return in 1966 with the help of his close followers in a cultural revolution where the 73 old energetic Mao swam in the Yangtze River for quite some time showing his rivals that he was back. He has worked out everything and knew that 40 years later the youth wouldn't remember anything about the great leap forward. He aimed in restoring communism back and his young followers brought about social and economic disorder in China. One of the noted gestures of Mao was that he met the then President of the United States in 1972, which helped alleviating China's position in the world besides easing tensions between the two countries. Mao died when he was 82 on September 9, 1976 in Beijing, China, after he suffered from Parkinson's disease. He is regarded as both China's political genius and genocide monster. Many have high regards for him for being a military mastermind, one of the best political strategists and the saviour of nation. While some steps such as eradication of Chinese culture and closing down Chinese trade and market were highly criticized. Kim Jong-un The North Korean dictator who is still alive and continues to terrorize his people with cruel ways is the third and also the youngest son of famous Korean military leader Kim Jong-il and opera singer Ko Jong-hee. His date of birth is not known to the world. Although Kim Jong-il had two elder sons, he was more attracted to Kim Jong-un, who is said to have characteristics just like his. There are rumours that Kim Jong-un had studied abroad in Switzerland before he joined the Kim Il-sung Military University in Pyongyang somewhere in the 2000s. His father prepared him for succession and after his father's death in December 2011, Kim Jong-un came into power and was assumed to be in his late twenties. Opposition Once Kim Jong-un took over North Korea as a leader, he removed and executed several officials who had worked with his father. Yang Song Thaik, his uncle, who had married Kim Kyung Hui, his father's sister, was also one of the victims. Yang Song Thaik played an important role in the Workers' Party of Korea. He was also one of the top advisors of Kim Jong-un. But Kim Jong-un thought he was going against him and was declared a traitor and executed six days later. His wife was found dead too. It is said that several of Yang Song Thaik's family members have also been executed. Kim Jong-un's rule North Korea has undergone several nuclear tests under the leadership of Kim Jong-un, the latest being in September 2016. Several countries have condemned this act. Kim Jong-un is said to have taken a wife in 2012, but the date of marriage is not known. His wife, Ri Sol Yu, is the first lady of North Korea and is often seen at public functions. Kim Jong-un is said to be more interactive with his workers and soldiers compared to his father. He is also liberal about Western cultures and even accompanied a professional basketball player, Dennis Rodman, for a football game. Rodman said that Kim Jong-un was interested in bettering the relations between North Korea and United States of America. The economic status of North Korea is bad. They have been facing famine and shortages of food since 1990. There also exists a concentration camp in North Korea that has horrifying conditions. 
There are many people who reveal horrific stories of their stay in the concentration camps. The internet is flooded with them. President Barack Obama issued a sanction on Kim Jong-un for human rights abuses in July 2016, which made him the first North Korean leader to receive a personal sanction from US. Kim Jong-un has promised to improve the agricultural, economical and educational status of North Korea. We are yet to see what Kim Jong-un is capable of doing during his rule.